Boom, 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 boom. Do you want the RTX 4060 in your room? <laughs> That's going to be the big question that needs to be answered in today's review of the RTX 4060. So let's get into those gaming benchmark numbers here at 1080p, where we're starting off with ultra settings on Dire Blow 4. Now, I have to call this something different because I got demonetized by YouTube in a previous video with no explanation. So you guys in the comments suggested I just call it something else, and that's what we're doing here. But this title, the RTX 4060, is scoring a victory over the RTX 3060. However, you may notice that you do get four gigabytes less VRAM. It's something that is important and it is a talking point which will make up for the recommendation. But we've also included the RX 6700 here as well as the ARC A750 and the RX 7600. Now, the RTX 2060 Super is also a really important card in these benchmarks because that will come in with some weight in today's recommendation. But moving on here with the numbers here at F1 1080p Ultra, we can see that it trades blows here with the AMD variants where they're coming in with a victory in this title as opposed to Dire Blow 4. Then going to The Last of Us, we do see the tables turn back in favor of Nvidia in this title and then going to Hogwarts Legacy it is a similar story here with it again scoring quite a healthy margin of performance over the RTX 3060 and this continues on with Cyberpunk 2077 though the AMD RX 7600 does do quite well in Cyberpunk 2077 especially at 1080p ultra settings though you may notice the ARC A750 at the bottom here of The Last of Us this is not a mistake this is actually a game update that The Last of Us brought in and this has caused the Intel graphics cards to run really poorly on this title whether you're on a beta driver or an old driver the game update has essentially made this card really difficult to run in this title. Now, I'm sure Intel will address this, but this is only one of the many problems that I was currently experiencing with ARC A750, especially since I played on this card for over a good week on various titles. But we will make a separate video on the ARC A750. Moving on to 1440p on Dire Blow 4. See here the 4060 is scoring that victory again over the other counterparts around this price point and the ARC A750 is moving up the charts but as we said before that performance is all over the place even in this next title here on F1 2022 where we can see that the AMD cards score the victory over the 4060 and then the 4060 scores a nice victory over 3060 then the ARC is losing to even a 2060 Super. Now moving on to The Last of Us on 1440p it's again a very similar story here except this time the ARC A750 managed to beat out the GTX 1060. But the 4060 is coming in really close to the RX 6700, but it does start to lose a little bit of momentum here at 1440p, though the 0.1% lows are really good, especially in relation to this latest game update with NVIDIA graphics cards, as opposed to the AMD cards there, sort of having a bit of stuttering issues. And then the ARC A750 is just completely dropping the ball. The move on to 1440p Hogwarts, here's where the AMD cards show that they are better equipped at 1440p at least for the average fps numbers than the 4060 the last of the gaming benchmarks we'll pull up here is the ray tracing numbers with also dlss 2 and 3 included and in particular if we're looking at cyberpunk we've got the xess setting for intel which is on quality and fsr2 and quality for amd cards and here is where the nvidia cards do shine quite brightly here with their ray tracing and also their DLSS 2 and even frame generation with DLSS 3 performance where you can extract a lot if you are into playing games with ray tracing on. Though on to F1 2022, it's a very similar story to Cyberpunk. However, this time around the ARC A750 doesn't have its upscaling technology available, so we decided to use FSR2 on it and it doesn't scale anywhere near the likes that it scales as well on AMD cards. But let's get on to the final graphs here in today's video and that is in relation to the power consumption as well as the undervolting and overclocking and I did say overclocking and this is the first time I'm going to be talking about overclocking with a GPU in a very long time because it is warranted with the 4060 though let's get those power consumption numbers out of the way with first where initially I made this graph and it was just too congested so I sort of cleaned it up a little bit in terms of what cards I feel are the better buys right now and what cards you can get 
in terms of their performance and undervolting. And, and here's where in dire blow four, you can see here that the RX 6700 and RTX 3060 undervolt quite well and they also give out really good performance. But then we look at the RTX 4060, and that does undervolt pretty well. However, the total power savings are not as good as the 3060 or the RX 6700, for example. And so that means that the card is already really efficient out of the box. It's also smaller silicon too, so there's not a lot of headroom there in terms of saving power, but also there's not a whole lot of headroom in terms of using more power. And this is where the overclocking actually can make a lot of sense, where if we bump the core slider roughly 180 megahertz, and then we bump the memory speeds, in this case, this sample was able to do plus 1500, this gave us about a 10% increase in performance with only using roughly six watts from the wall. So it's a really good option this time around if you get a 4060 to overclock the spat out of it and as we see then versus the RTX 3060 it does give a whole chunk of performance more so that over 30% figure can become a reality and so if there's a saving grace for the 4060 here I think it's its overclocked figures and how much power it uses where it's scoring some impressive results not just for the power it's using but when you overclock it it does put it in a really good tier of performance especially with a game like Dire Blow 4. Though if we also look at the raw numbers, I decided to throw this in with this title in particular because it's probably the best title I've seen to date that takes advantage of DLSS 3, where you can just turn that on. You don't have to turn on DLSS 2. Some titles you do have to turn on DLSS 2, but this title you can just whack on DLSS 3 and you've got a performance boost there from the get-go that also scales with overclocking and undervolting too. However, I just decided to throw in the default figure here, but DLSS 3, it does work extremely well on this title if you are into D4. Though with those benchmarks out of the way, it's time for a conclusion and a recommendation with the RTX 4060 8 gigabyte OC. Now, this OC model, if you guys see the OC models and they're $30 more than the original model, then do not buy it. It's a complete waste of your money. As we saw in these graphs here today, I manually OC'd this card and got a lot of performance out of it when I did that. And from what I can see with my results versus people who have, especially in Cyberpunk, for instance, versus Jay's results, who have a non-OC card, the difference is very negligible. It's minimal. It could even come down to variance at that stage. So do not pay any more than 299 if you are thinking about getting this GPU. Though that said, we've got a lot of cards here that are just constantly changing in prices. From what I can see, the RX 7600 has come down now in price from its original 299 and then it came down to 270 and it can be had now for around $250. So that's coming down in price. Then we've got the RX 6700, which exists as well. It's got two gigabytes more VRAM. That's coming in at around $280. So if you want to go with AMD for, in some cases, depends on the title, better rasterization for the dollar, that's a choice as well. But then we move back to the most important comparison here with the 4060, and that is the 3060, which everywhere I look in the world, the 3060, or at least the 3060 Ti, depends on the prices. They do fluctuate. These are the most popular selling GPUs at this point in time. With that being said, the RTX 3060, as we said before, it does have four gigabytes of extra VRAM. And if you need that VRAM, if you're conscious about running out of VRAM in the future, that's going to be a better buy there. So ultimately, if you want to buy a new GPU, you're left in this spot that can be quite confusing at this point. My personal recommendation is look at what's available in your market. If the 4060 is a similar price to a 3060, I'd personally go with the 4060. If the 3060 Ti is coming in with a close price to the 4060 at 299, which in America it's 330 for a 3060 Ti right now, go with that. You're going to get more performance. Or if you don't need the power savings and also the DLSS 3. So ultimately, guys, look at the charts here today. Look at your area. Look at your prices. Prices are going to be fluctuating quite a bit, especially given the turbulent times here not just in Japan's economy, but economies all over the world. And this is something we'll quickly mix in. Monetary conditions, M2 money supply, it's contracting. And it's contracting at a time where debt levels have never been so high. 
which means that money is going to get more scarce, which means that your 299 will be able to buy more in a month's time, given things don't change in terms of Fed policy and whatnot in the next month. So basically, as these conditions keep going on, and we'll reach a point where I think things will turn around, but as these conditions keep going, money is going to get more scarce. You're going to be able to buy more for your dollar, basically. And so make the best choice for you. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to he. Listen to yourself, basically, and buy what's best for you. That's all I ever want you guys to do. And with that said, I always recommend taking a look on the used market as well if you want to get some extremely good value for money, which we've got a used parts hunt here coming up at Tech Yes City very soon. So do stay tuned for that. So with the RTX 4060, from what I can see with the graphs here today, it's actually not that bad value for money. What I think though people are upset about is that for me personally, when I look at this as objectively as possible, is you're not getting much more over a 60 series class card two generations ago. And this is where I thought about, I was like that RTX 2060 Super is actually looking really good in the graphs. And here's where if we go with the 2060 Super or the 2060 versus say a 1060, there's a big jump in performance. If we go with a 1060 over the historical GTX 760, there was a big performance jump there too. And then if we go to the RTX 3060 versus the 1660, big performance increase. So for four years in the making, it's not a whole lot of a performance uplift. However, it has gone down from 399 to 299 in that time frame. Although, and this is the biggest thing, with money uh, supply inflation factored in, M2 money supply inflation. So that is one point that I'm not going to ignore. If you guys are into economics, you'll understand that actually the process is being reversed right now too. And you'll notice that CPU uh, prices are on the way down, GPU prices are on the way down. And this is because you are contracting the money supply in a time where debt, which is also deflationary, if there is no new revolving debt to replace it, is a big factor. So basically, in a nutshell, money's getting tighter. That 299, all things considered, in a month's time, will be actually able to buy you more than your 299 today. And that's what you're seeing with tech products. As that M2 money supply inflation goes down, you're seeing the tech product prices go down across the board. So although you've had up until six months ago, M2 money supply inflation be a thing since the Great Depression pretty much, you've now seen a reversal and it is spelling a lot of havoc. I've said since the individual is having to do it tough, my personal opinion is I would like to see these prices more competitive. I'd like to see Nvidia take that haircut too with the 4060 Ti coming down to 350 and also the 4060 at 270. I think there'd be no complaints at all with both these cards if prices were at these levels. Though I think in a few months time, if things continue the way they are with M2 money supply uh, contracting, you will see those prices regardless. Though to sum things up at 299, it could be the best card for you depending on where you live. There could be better options out there, even from NVIDIA themselves, whether it's the 3060 on sale or the 3060 Ti. Just look at what's best for you guys. And with that aside, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in another one very soon. I was going to say peace out for now, but you also get AV1 encoding, which from the individual user is really most useful if you're streaming on pretty poor internet. That's the uh, gist of that, as well as if you're saving a lot of video files and creating a lot of video files and you want to use the AV1 in uh, codec. So that's important there. It is an addition over the 3000 series cards. However, AMD's latest RX 7600 carries that as well as the ARC A752. And also do let us know in the comment section below what you think of the 4060. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.